Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So if you're someone that has worked at a school or a community center, or old folks home, any kind of community setting like that or a school setting, this video is going to be for you. In the fall, I had the pleasure to teach a fifth grade class. And lucky enough for me, the first two science subjects teaching environments and the food web. So I told the students day one, I planted a classroom fish tank with them and they would get to choose fish. And before we get into the video too much, if you have not already, please consider hitting that subscribe button, leave a like on the video. Let me know what some of the crazy suggestions you think these students had were for the tank. So step one before I did anything was I had to check with my admin and the maintenance department just to make sure everything was going to be a fire code and there wouldn't be any issues and everything was just safe above bar from the beginning. Principal basically said, do whatever you want. It's your room. Maintenance is like, it should be fine. We don't see any issues. So just be safe. Check where you are. Cause some places might have a weird constraint that tank can't be too close to the outlets or something like that. So start this off once you check with admin. If you're not wanting to spend too much money for a project like this, there's a lot of places you can go about asking for things to be donated or gifted to you as far as a tank or supplies are. Many of the box stores like PetSmart or Petco actually do have marketing departments that will be willing to donate tanks and supplies to communities or for projects like this. They usually like to do things on a bigger scale, but sometimes if you're lucky, you can convince them to get stuff for smaller classrooms like this too. If you don't have success there, you can always check out local fish clubs or local fish stores, see if they have a tank they're getting rid of, or know if someone has a tank to get rid of, or maybe they'll just cut you a really good deal on the tank and get are super cheap. There are of course always the 50% off sales or the, the general seasonal sales that most box stores will have on tanks and kits. I got super lucky and I was able to get a store to donate me a 20 gallon tank. We'll talk about the size of tanks later. It was a kit, so I also got the filter, the heater, the hood, and the light with it. Perfect. Then able to get substrate donated from local club, saved me even more money. For Hardscape, I reached out to Manzanita Driftwood with a link in the description, and they were able to supply me with two really nice pieces of driftwood that I can put in the tank. Now, another option, if you're really good at foraging and you know what you're looking for, you can use rocks and wood right in your own backyard. Just look them up, make sure you're curing them properly and making them aquarium safe. Some woods are not aquarium safe, others are. Just do your research if you want to go that route and save a little cash there too. The plants and the fish were the two things I figured that would cost me the most that I'd actually have to spend some money on. Luckily, having all these tanks at home, I had the plants right here. All I had to do was clip them. So I went around, clipped my stem plants, clipped my mosses, cut some pieces off my anubias, and I was able to plant up the tank nicely since it was a smaller size tank. Again, you can always reach out to a local store or company online, see if they're willing to send you some plants or livestock and stuff for free. Or again, work with you, maybe give you a little discounted rate because it is for something like a classroom or a community. So just to recap here, I was able to get the tank, the substrate, plants, hardscape, all for free, which probably saved me between like $150 to $200 right there because the tank kit alone is a $100 tank kit. That's when it's on sale. So save me a lot of money right there. We interrupt your regularly scheduled video to remind you that we have merch. If you go to lefty3213a.selfie.store, you'll be brought to our lovely merch store, where we have a bunch of different t-shirts designed by me, along with some bags, some coffee mugs, because we all need that kick of caffeine throughout the day. And then, of course, a good old water bottle to refresh us from all that caffeine. We do occasionally do it limited run shirts, which will only be available for a certain amount of time before they disappear. Keep an eye out if you want any of those when they come out and we will now return you back to your video so now the only thing i needed to purchase for the tank myself was livestock now the livestock part is clearly the part that's going to be most fun for the students they were so excited to get their class tank and were even more excited when i told them that they got to pick the fish too of course i did do this diplomatically and smart this being a fifth grade class and me not knowing the level of their ability to take care of fish because most of them said they didn't have fish. A couple students clearly did because they knew some specific fish that most people aren't going to know if they just go to a pet store. I wanted to pick fish that were, from my standpoint, easy to care for fish, low maintenance fish that didn't require too much care, and of course, something exotic, just to throw it in there. There were fish, I gave them four different water level area fish. Uh, I gave them choices from Tetras, Danios, corridors and a live bear 
just to get even more interaction with the tank, get that reproduction aspect. And it was also helping towards a lesson point, which is what animals need in their environment to make more of themselves. Also flew in one exotic fish and simply said yes or no on the voting sheet. I'll reveal that fish later, but I want to pick a pause and guess what I might have put on the list. So here is what these sheets look like. I made these on Google Doc and just printed them out, one for each student. You can make your life easier, worm pole or something like that if you're not one who waste paper. If you're not doing this as a teacher and for your classroom, paper is a good way to go. You could just do a whiteboard, put the fish names up, and have people raise their hand if you really wanted to. So I told the students to pick from the list. I said pick one from each of these, and I put pick one on there. So Tetris, they got to pick glow light, embers, silver tip, black phantoms, lemons, surveys, there still is. And one of the suggestions from the community here on YouTube was pencilfish. Just something different to throw in there. Still same parameters, still not that hard to take care of. For all these, all the students had to do was circle whichever they only wanted, put a star, put something next to it for that fish. Then we moved down to Danios. The choices they had for these were good old zebra Danios, orange Danios, glow lights, celestial pearls, and leopards. Again, all they had to do, circle the one they wanted in the tank. Next up, we had the corridors. For these, I literally just looked for the cheapest options, so they got to pick from albinos, julies, and skunks. Again, just pick their favorite, and then we moved on to live bears. To have the live bear option for me gave the students a chance to just pick a fish that was going to add a pop of color, depending on you know what else they picked. It could have been a very bland palette. They had two guppy choices, a platy choice, two sword tails, and a molly to choose from. Again, for these, I just looked at cheap options, but also fish that I knew were easy and low maintenance, and Kind of just add water and boom, babies. Now the exotic option. This is the fun part for all the students. Before we get into that, let me give you some of the crazy suggestions that the students had for me. Starting us off with an actual fish that could have actually gone in the tank. One of the kids blew me away. He suggested an axolotl. I was like, that wouldn't be a bad choice. But if I did axolotls, we could only have one and I want to have more than one. So it's more, more fun for you guys. He also said puffers, which I was like, hmm, puffers, that maybe could work. I also got things like sharks, but not bala sharks or rainbow sharks. These students straight up asked if we could have a great white shark in a 20 gallon aquarium in the back of the classroom. But that's not the craziest things I got. I had suggestions for a seal, a sea lion, and my personal favorite, a whale. <laughs> Of course, I knew they were just messing around, but it was fun. It was engaging. It got them more interested in science, which was the whole point, because I think they started to realize that learning could be fun, even though the textbook makes it a little dry. So what did I pick for the exotic choice? If you want to pause and go take a guess down in the comments, let me know. Well, I did end up putting a puffer on the list and just gave an option, yes or no, do you want this? But what puffer would I put in it? It was only a 20 gallon tank. I couldn't get anything big. Now, I had never kept pufferfish before. I had looked at purchasing Amazon puffers or Congo puffers for myself, but never went through with it. This was a way for me and the students to try something a little crazy. Now, if you guess pea pufferfish, then you would be right. I gave the students the option of adding pufferfish into this mishmash community tank, and I think like out of 24 students, only two voted no. So with the final stocking list out of all these options, again, pause, leave a comment, let me know if you guess correctly. Okay, here we go. Of course, pea puffers for crazy fish, perfect. Kind of figured that was gonna be a yes either way. Uh, for the live bearers, it kind of shocked me. You all saw the choices. They voted pretty high in favor of those blue-green platies. And I figured they would go for the flashy guppies or the sword tails just because they're more vibrant and they look cool, but no. They went for the gold platies. Awesome, cool. Never owned platies before, but for myself, easy to care for. How hard could they be? Corridors, they chose the Julie Cory. Honestly, wasn't sure which they pick here. I thought they might lean more to the albino because they look kind of cool looking, but I guess it creeped enough of them out and they didn't move for it. Danios, they went with the good old run of the mill zebras again. Bit of a surprise for me since I was thinking they'd pick something with more color. But hey, it was their tank. They got to pick. As for the Tetras, 
These being my favorite fish species, I really didn't have an opinion either way. But I was so happy when they picked Pristella Tetras because they were the cheapest option. Now, looking back, they actually went with the cheapest options for all of these, which made my life so much easier. Once the stock list was finalized, it was time to buy the fish. For this, I went on the wet spot, and I think I spent around 100 bucks, maybe a little more. But the wet spot does minimums of like six or five fish, or down to three, depending on which kind of fish it is, because most fish are either schooling or a shelling type fish, and they need to be in that group, and they don't sell them unless you're buying a certain amount of them just so they aren't super stressed and whatnot in your tank. So, in total, we had six Tetras, six Danios, six Platys, but I kept a few of them home so the tank wasn't too crowded, five corridors, and I believe it was three or five peep members. I can't remember which one. I also added some coolie loaches because they were on sale when I was placing the order, and I thought they might just get some more enjoyment out of them. So in total, we're looking at roughly around 30 fish in this tank, but they all stayed small and their maintenance wasn't crazy and I was of course there to keep an eye on the tank and make sure nothing went crazy and if it did I could just bring it home. Tank comes in, I set it up, I brought a beta fish from home and a sponge out of one of my hang on the back filters just to get everything cycling and help kickstart it and then about a week later fish arrived from the wet spot. Students were so excited when their fish finally came in. They came back from lunch and they got to see fish in the tank finally because this was a several month process. Go started end of August we weren't ordering the fish till October. Now they all wanted to crowd the tank and just look at these fish. I ended up letting about five go at a time. And I explained to them that fish like us can get stressed from loud noises, tapping on the glass, banging on the lid, if you hit the table, stuff like that. So this also then became kind of a social emotional thing where I was able to relate the fish to how you might be feeling if it's too loud and you're overwhelmed and you start freaking out and getting stressed. So there's another way I could rope the fish tank into the lessons. They understood. They didn't want to lose their fish they just got, and it went perfectly. I let students stay for about five, ten minutes, and they go back to their seats. It was silent reading time anyway, so it wasn't a big deal. Feeding them was super simple. Every day, two students got to feed them. I had a similar bag of fiber bites, this size right here, and I had a carnivore sinking pellet, super tiny, courtesy of Hikari. Thank you very much. And I instructed them that a small pinch of the red worms and two of those small discs a day was all the fish needed. And these little bags lasted me from October through April vacation. I don't think I had to bring more food in until first or second week of May. Now, speaking of vacations, for when we had a week long break for holidays or whatever, I would set up an auto feeder to make sure the fish were fed. Now, if it was something like a three or four day weekend kind of thing, or just a random day in the middle of the week, I didn't worry about feeding them. I would feed them on Friday or whatever our last day was before the break and the fish would be fine. Our janitor was also super cool and told me that he would go in and feed them and check on them and just make sure they were okay for me. And he actually did end up feeding them over Christmas break because I kind of forgot to bring the auto feeder in. And I was a bit worried because that vacation is the longest one. And it's right on that cusp of being too long where there might not be enough natural stuff in the tank for the fish to survive. I was a bit worried when I was coming to work. That first day after New Year's, I was like, oh my god, these fish can be alive. Luckily, he fed them and they were fine. For those that don't know, I did do an awesome video with some other fish keepers on YouTube and asked about them going away and if they were gone for a certain amount of time, how they would go about feeding their fish. If they would, if they wouldn't, I'll put a card here if you want to check that out too. So I said I would talk about tank size before and I wanted to address it because some people may not have the space for a 20 gallon tank or they may just want to go bigger. If you want to go bigger, be my guest. I should mention the room I was in didn't have access to water, so I had to bring a five gallon bucket and do maintenance that way and utilize another room sink. So it did make maintenance slightly more difficult for me. If you have the space with water hookup and you want to do a bigger tank, go right ahead because it's going to open up your world to so many more fish you could do in larger quantities. The only thing you have to remember when you're doing this is you have summers off. So from July and August, you're not going to be there to take care of these fish. So you either have to break the whole tank down, bring the fish home with you, and then reset the tank up in the fall, or bring the fish home with you, rehome them, give them to the kids, leave the tank there, just unplug everything. What I ended up doing is I have all these tanks at home. I just brought the fish home, redistributed them, and brought the hardscape and stuff back with me. Also, there's going to be a new group of kids anyway, so if I want to do this again, I could go through the whole process again, rinse and repeat. 
On the other hand, if you don't want to have to manage a 20 gallon tank, you could easily do this with a 10 or even a five gallon. I did a whole video on five gallon stocking ideas if you need suggestions for that too. The real difference between 10 and 20 gallon is that all the fish I listed could still go in a 10. It would just be instead of them getting to pick one of each tier, they would get to pick one of the Tetras or one of the Danios and they would just get a group of six and then let them pick a quarry cap. So the process can be adapted to many different size tanks, different fish varieties. You can make it your own. So I just wanted to share this experience with you and show you that it can easily be adapted to different situations beyond just a classroom. It could be a fun office project, something to boost morale. It could be something if you work at a firehouse and you want to have something there, de-stress and unwind. It could be just a fun team building activity if you need something to do as a group of people. It could be a senior center, something that you can help build with a community of seniors. You have multiple different tanks in different areas of different areas of a senior center. Anywho, well, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this and maybe found it useful. And as always, I will catch you.